So we've made our way through the parasternal long axis view, the different views that we can see in the parasternal short axis view, and now we're making our way to the apical four chamber view, okay? So in this case, remember with the parasternal long and short axis views, where we had um, our patient in the left lateral decubitus position, we'll also have the patient in this position in this case, all right? Although we're going to move the transducer, okay? We're going to move the transducer to or near the point of maximal impulse, okay? The apical impulse, and where that is, is about here at the apex of the heart. And what we're also going to do is we want the marker on the transducer directed in this direction where the arrow is going, okay? And so this is about 3 o'clock. If you imagine this is 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, you can see this is 3 o'clock. So transducer, uh, you know, about 3 o'clock directed in that direction. We want to tilt the transducer towards the patient's left hip. Okay, so towards the patient's left hip, remember, if this is the right side of the patient, this is the left side of the patient, we're going to, here's this arrow going towards the patient's left hip. And we're going to want to direct the ultrasound beam going through the long axis of the heart, okay, the long axis of the heart, you can see the beam here in this direction, okay. So again, we have the transducer on the apical impulse directed towards the three o'clock is where the marker will be and we're going to tilt it towards the patient's left hip and the depth can be about 14 to 18 centimeter and we can adjust it based on the patient so i guess what are we seeing in this uh, view so why the apical four chamber view well as the name implies the apical four chamber view it gives us a view of the four chambers of the heart the two atria and the two ventricles so notice here again here is our labeled image. So this one here is labeled, okay? This is the unlabeled image. And this is more of the kind of cartoon depiction of it, okay? So three different ways you can look at it. I want you to you know, make sure you can see in different ways because I hope one of them actually sticks. So notice here in the labeled view, we have the left ventricle in this position. That would mean this one here, okay? And if you look at the one that's I call this cartoon, this is the left ventricle. Remember between, uh, from the left ventricle, you also have the left atrium. So this is the left atrium. Between the left atrium and the left ventricle, you have the mitral valve. So imagine this is the left atrium. This is the mitral valve. Look here, here's our left atrium and the mitral valve, okay? You can also see the pulmonary valve right here, okay, PV. So that would be in this case. And then we also have the right side of the heart. You can see the right atrium and the right ventricle. So this is the right atrium, the right ventricle can also be seen. And here it is, right atrium, right ventricle. And we know between them, we have the tricuspid valve, which would be this one here. Okay, so again, multiple ways that you can view it. So I'll erase some of this so you can see it. So notice that we're seeing the four chambers and we can also see the valves between them the mitral valve and the uh, tricuspid valve. So again, this is the transducer, just so you're aware, this is the transducer here. It'd be at the top, okay? And this here is the marker. So labeled in yellow is the marker, okay? And remember, the marker is directed towards three o'clock. So hopefully that makes sense. So what can we assess? Well, we can assess the chamber size of the left ventricle, right ventricle, left atrium, right atrium. We can assess the left ventricle and right ventricle's function. And we can see if, is there, how is the motion and is there any evidence of regurgitation at the mitral valve or the tricuspid valve, okay? Remember, here's our mitral valve and this is our tricuspid valve. So we can evaluate them to see how the motion of them, is there any mitral regurgitation or tricuspid regurgitation present? Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's recap before we end here. So again, the apical four chamber view, okay? So now we're moving our transducer uh, from the left sternal, okay, that third or fourth intercostal space to the apical impulse, the, near the point of maximal Im impulse or PMI. Okay, so that's this point here. We want the transducer directed, the marker directed towards that three o'clock. We want to tilt it down towards the patient's left hip. 
okay? And what we want to do is get the long axis view of the heart. The depth can be between 14 and 18 centimeters. Again, adjust it based on the patient. Uh, again, we want them in the left lateral decubitus position, so we haven't changed position from the parasternal long or short axis view. And we said we can assess, as the name implies, the four chambers, okay? The size of the atria, the left atrium and the right atrium, okay? Remember, we saw those. We can also assess the size of the ventricles, okay? So here's the left atrium, right atrium, left ventricle, right ventricle. And we said we can look at uh, the motion, and re if there's any evidence of regurgitation, at the uh, level of the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve between their respective um, ventricles or chambers, okay? Uh, we also want to note there's the pulmonary valve that you can see here, that station there that you may sometimes see as well, okay? The pulmonary valve is something you may be able to catch on this view. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay? So this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100 more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter, okay? So completely separate from what you're getting online for free, okay? These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book, okay? And then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide. Uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there, okay? We'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already, okay? So this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows, uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay? You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay? And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even 
it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right. Have a great day.